So do you ever struggle with using pastes with your stencils? If you have, you're not alone in this. Recently, I started teaching in-person art classes and I realized that most of my students had either never used pastes with stencils or were having a little bit of trouble getting consistent results. So today I wanna to share with you the different tools to use, the different stencils to use, and how to get really good results using paste through stencil. And if you haven't met yet, my name is Nadine and welcome to Hop Along Studio. So let's get started. So this is just a small sampling of all the paste that I own. And that might seem a little crazy, but I absolutely love paste. I think they're one of the best things you can use in your creative practice. And so I'll start with more of the easily available craft pastes. And so these Dreamer Weaver ones I've had for more than 10 years and they are still good, which is kind of unusual for a paste, but they're working really well still. They're getting a little strange in their old age and I'll go over what to do if you're starting to get a little bit of dried out paste and what you can do about that. So with these ones, they are known as an embossing paste. They're also just a type of paste that can be put through a stencil. I also have these TCW stencil butters and they work basically like a paste, they're just colored. And then I also have these lunar pastes, and I know there's a lot of other pastes available, but these are the ones that I have chosen to test out and try and see how I like them. And so all these ones have slightly different textures and slightly different feels. And then you have a choice to move to the more art quality paste, where you have like the flexible modeling paste, which actually has marble dust in it. But this one's nice because it is flexible, which means that you can use it on your art journal pages and not worry about it cracking. And then you have crackle paste, which puts big or small cracks, depending on how much you apply it, through your stencil. And then lastly, I have have fiber paste here and fiber paste is created with paper fibers in it so it's like working on an old book page and it's really nice because it does absorb color in a really interesting way and so these are some of my three favorites that I like to use but I also have a lot of the craft ones that I also use so the artist pastes are usually made in slightly larger containers eight fluid ounces about as small as you can get and they are created with only white and the reason is that you are expected to use paint or inks or some other colored medium to color them and in a future video I'll go over how you can color these types of paste to get the best results in your creative projects and that's coming in a few weeks and so as we go on you'll notice that every single one of these pastes goes on a little bit differently and that's one thing I wanted to share with you today was how you can use different pastes and what to expect from them so that you always get good results through a stencil. So there's a variety of tools that you can use to add paste to your stencil. I like using a lot of metal palette knives, but they're not the only choice out there. Uh, Ranger does make these craft squeegees, which basically can be bent and moved and the paste can be added through the stencil. They do have a nice amount of bend to them. You could even use an old gift card uh, to add paste through your stencil, but some of my favorite things are the palette knives. You will often find plastic palette knives and metal palette knives. And I prefer the metal ones just because of how thin they are. You can notice that for the plastic ones, they have to make them a little bit thicker just so that they don't break. Both of these have decent amount of give to them. I like the give in the metal ones. I like the thinness of the metal ones because I find I get better results with it. But you need to be careful which ones you use. I try not to use ones with these really sharp edges. This one is sharp enough that I have actually cut myself on it on a few occasions. So I tend not to use ones like this or like this for adding paste through the stencils. It's gonna catch on the corners and might damage your stencil. So they're not my favorite choice. These I use more for just strictly palette painting, but these are the ones that I like. Ones that are either a little bit smaller and have a nice diamond shape. But my favorite one for stencils is this one, just because you can add a lot and you can bring it down really evenly and you don't have to worry about having too many marks, but it's large enough, but detailed enough on this end to be able to manipulate the paste really well. So let's talk about stencils. There are so many different stencil designs out there, but you need to be aware that certain ones are gonna be easier to add paste through, other ones are gonna be a little bit harder. For example, this one's gonna be very easy for adding color through. So you can see with this one, it has a lot of these little details, but it has a lot of these bigger areas around it, which means it's gonna be very easy just to pull your paste across the stencil. This one here is also gonna be a little bit on the easier side, just because you have the flowers and you can really just pull it across. Ones like this would be a little bit more challenging. You have some nice big areas, and as long as you keep it really flat and you don't go too hard through the stencil, it shouldn't be a problem. Same with this one. I've used both of these quite a bit with a lot of chunkier paste, and it's worked really, really well. 
The one that I'm still working on mastering is this one. So you can see because of how thin it is, that can catch a lot of corners. That can catch a lot of spots. You're gonna have to work really hard to make sure you keep this nice and steady when you're adding your paste, just so that you don't end up getting it underneath the stencil, which is very easy to do with really fine detailed stencils like this, but they do create really beautiful effects. So it might be hard to see here, but this stencil has been created with a bevel. And not all stencils have bevels, but this one's a little bit more obvious than some. So basically, if you look extremely closely, there is a very slight angle on this side of the stencil. And what that does is because of that angle, it helps the paste stay a little bit better on this side and it will seep under the stencil less. That doesn't mean you can't use this side of the stencil. I often do, but if you're new to stenciling, looking for that bevel, and not all stencils have them, so don't be worried if you can't see it, but it does help keep the paste where you want it to be and it keeps it from seeping under and places you don't want it. And that's just something to do with the manufacturing of some of these stencils, that they do help you in that way so that you don't have to worry quite as much about seeping underneath the stencil. So we're gonna start with a very simple stencil. This one, again, is an easy one to do because it has all of those areas around it that's gonna make it a little bit easier to get the color down without it falling underneath the stencil. So you wanna add a little bit to the back of your palette knife and you'll notice that if it's a good paste, it shouldn't gloop off. You should be able to just have it kind of sit on the surface of your knife. The first stroke is actually going to pull the stencil onto the surface. I know some people talk about using a low tack adhesive to hold the stencil in place. I don't find that it's necessary. I find that that first stroke will generally hold it in place. And now I'm just going down the stencil and I'm not scraping it out of those spots, but I'm just basically putting it nicely over top. I'm looking for basically a coat that's going to be about the thickness of the stencil. So if you add too much paste onto your stencil, and you'll notice here that I've actually scraped off any excess that I've had, and I'm putting it right back in the jar, so there's no point in wasting any of the medium that you have. But what that does is that's gonna give me a really crisp image. If you have it on too thick, you're gonna lose some of that crisp image. It's gonna have little ridges on it, it's not gonna be really good. But at the same time, you don't wanna be scraping into the stencil because that also is an inconsistent image. So if you pull that off, you can see, even though it's a very detailed stencil, I have a very crisp, really nice image on that. And you'll see I have very little paste on the stencil, and I've put what I can back in my jar. And if you want to have your paste last longer, get uh, some Glad Press and Seal. Because of the nature of the Press and Seal, it's gonna help prevent, your one, your lid from sticking to your jar, and two, prevent it from drying out. So that's what I like to use on the tops of every single one of my mediums. And you always wanna make sure that you go and wash your stencil right away, otherwise this will not come off. When it comes to paste thicknesses, I find the Lurner paste is a bit thinner than the stencil butter, and I prefer the stencil butter for stencils. The Lunar paste isn't bad if you wanna put it on really thin layers, but it is a little bit more liquid. So as long as you are aware of that, it can also work really well with a stencil. Any of these pastes will work well with a stencil. Um, this embossing paste is again a little bit thicker, so it's gonna go on a little bit thicker as well. So that's something to consider. I wanna show you how you can use crackle paste through a stencil, and basically also how you can add images that you only wanna add a certain area of the image. So what I have here is I have the crackle paste and I'm going to add it with a smaller palette knife. If you wanna do any detail work, small palette knives are the way to go. So I just have this background and I'm looking at it and going, well, I want these two flowers in and I will have those leaves that go up to the edge. So by being very careful with how you apply it through and going, going slowly and evenly, You can add the paste to the stencil. It just takes a little bit more finesse to get this. So just, it might not be something to try the first time around, but as you go on and you want to try to add images in, in certain places, this works really well. And you can see here, it might be very hard to see. I have this little purple spot hanging out. I've scraped too much of the paste off. So I go back in and I want to make sure that I have a nice even layer because you don't want it too thick. At the same time, you don't want to be scraping through it so that you lose some of your image. And so I'm gonna pull that up. So you can see I have a really nice image, but I scraped that back in, but then what I ran into is I went a little bit over. So any areas that you go over, you can basically just scrape it off with your palette knife 
And then we're gonna continue on in this corner. And so when I do this, let's say I wanted to put these flowers in here. As long as you don't add too much paste through the stencil, the back of the stencil shouldn't have any paste. So you can keep using it, keep working with it. And so I'm gonna add in these two flowers here. If you're right-handed, you wanna to work top, across, and then down to the bottom. If you're left-handed, you wanna do it the opposite way. It's whatever, whatever your dominant hand is. But what you want to avoid is to prevent yourself from adding paste here and then trying to add a stencil here and then getting your hand in the paste and then smearing it and then getting really, really frustrated, which I have done multiple times. So that's why I wanted to talk about a few of these little more detailed things that maybe don't seem all that relevant and might seem pretty standard operating procedure, but at the same time, uh, I've messed up of this stuff enough to know that sometimes when you're in the moment, you don't always remember some of these things. And so I can continue on. So you just wanna make sure that you don't ever touch the area below. And I had a student in my class who was like, oh, I really wanted something there, but then I had an issue there. So what I ended up doing is I ended up holding up the stuff with stencil on the one side. She pressed down on the other and got her paste through. So you can make it work. You just might need a, a second set of hands or someone to help you, but you can make some of these things work. The other option is you just let it dry. You let it dry and you go in with another layer of paste if you're worried about ruining your image. That just takes a certain amount of patience <laughs> and sometimes I don't have it. So that's how why I do this type of technique because it allows me to get images in when maybe I'm being a little bit lazy or I don't necessarily want to wait. <laughs> and the fiber paste goes on again a little bit more smoothly and has a very different texture than any of the other paste that I've used so far. And if you find your paste start getting a little chunky, because I find that even over time, no matter how much that I use uh, sealants and everything to prevent this from getting any air in it, over time, especially when you get close to the bottom of the container, it will start getting thicker, it might start drying out. If it goes completely hard, it's done. You can't really fix that. But if it's still movable and it's still kind of working, you can always spray a little bit of water on the top, uh, mix it in a little bit with the paste, even sometimes I will use some of my old paste, I'll put on a palette, I will mix some water in it, and then I will apply it. And that's a way that you can keep those pastes going even when they are starting to dry out. But the key with this is I wouldn't hold on to paste more than a few years. Uh, some of my pastes I've had for a little bit longer than that, like this uh, Dreamweaver stuff that's lasted 10 years is unusual. They don't usually last that long. That's why a lot of people like them in those small containers because you don't use a lot of them, but I tend to get them in these sizes or these sizes, partially because I'm doing classes and partially because I do like using a lot of them. And part of that is because I do do palette paintings like this. So this is all with a palette knife and with some paste and with different colors. And so in a couple of weeks, I'll be showing you how to color your mediums. It allows you to do things like this, where you basically use one white, medium and you color it a bunch of different ways and you can create your own palette painting. So the last thing I want to cover in this video is how to use paste through a really fine stencil like this. You have ones like this that are a little bit more sturdy, they're not quite as fine and they might be a good choice, but I recently got this one and it is very fine. It is very easy to have the paste go where you don't want it to go. So I'm gonna be showing you how you can use a modeling paste. And this one's a flexible modeling paste by Liquitex. My understanding is the golden stuff, um, it's just called modeling paste because it is just created to be a little bit more flexible. So the modeling paste is perfect for using the original just because of the flex, it's going to really help you be able to control it better. And so I'm just mixing this up a little bit in my container before I apply it. I'm gonna take a little bit and I'm pushing it down. And I'm gonna have to be very gentle and you're not gonna to wanna to move in a lot of different directions with this because if you move down, up, side to side, not only is it gonna give it a more of a chance to get underneath, uh, you're probably not going to get a very good image. And it's gonna look a little funny. I find that if you're going to end up with stroke lines, have them all go one direction, it, it's less distracting for the eye. And just go very gently, but I can even tell the stencil's moving as I'm going. So we'll see if I get a good image. But this is why I wanted to show this to you. And um, this is where having something that's maybe a little bit more uh, wet or softer. And this is maybe where you take some of this modeling paste and you put a tiny bit of water into the pile that you're working on, just so that you can try to control it a little bit more and get it a little bit softer. 
and I'm going to go all the way up to the edges here, which is going to give me more of a chance to have this go sideways on me, but I really do want to cover the entire page. Yeah, you can see that I just pulled it up, so I'm going to probably end up with a spot there that is a little bit, a little bit funky, but I'm okay with that. I don't actually mind them and they're not perfect. <laughs> I, can't, I usually find a way to, to work with it. I don't ever look at something and go, well, the, the image isn't perfect, it's ruined. It's, you can always add something else on top. Part of the reason I wanted to do this for you today was not just to show you how to use these pastes, but also encourage you to try different mediums. Um, I've been playing with paste the last few years. I absolutely love them. And uh, they're probably one of my favorite things to do. I started doing a lot of palette painting a few years back. And I haven't done much in the last year or so. So my goal for this year is to do more palette paintings and kind of get my skills back up with that. I just think that we should all be trying new mediums. Uh, try something that's different and new to you. I find there's a balance. You don't want to be the one trying everything because then you never get good at one thing. And I think that's what I struggle with sometimes is I, I try everything and then I don't really focus on one particular medium enough. But at the same time, I think something like this, especially in your journaling practice of being able to add in a little bit of mediums, adding in a little bit of a different feel to your pages can go a long way. Creating more texture, creating more dimension. And I wanted to do this to show you that these aren't scary. A lot of people go, oh, mediums, those are so scary. They're so messy. Well, not really. Like I've basically made no mess. I haven't even been uh, protecting my pages as I've been going. It's all in the back of my palette knife. I scrape it off. That's all good. I take this, I wipe this off. That's all good. It doesn't have to be super messy. And the only thing that's messy is your stencil, but then you could be putting it straight into uh, a sink to clean it, so that's fine too. Okay, so now we have the big reveal. How did I do? Actually, not bad. Um, this is better than the last one that I did. You can see in some areas where the medium's a little less even, you can see a spot here where I have this little corner that's pulled up. And what that corner's pulled up is that's a little bit too much medium on the page. And then any areas along the edge here, just feel free to take your palette knife and just scrape it before it dries. And then that's gonna help as well. So I wanna show you an example of a page where our, I did have some trouble with this particular stencil. So this one, we got a really good image. I honestly was a little bit surprised how well that image went on. With this one, it was a little bit more challenging. Part of that, I was using some leftover paste. I was working quite quickly. I think I was working with it on my lap, so I wasn't being super careful. I think my studio space was a disaster at that point. So I was adding it very quickly through the stencil. So you can see areas in here, areas along the edges where I don't have it on evenly. Um, you can see where it's seeped underneath. Uh, I didn't go all the way to the edges. That's another option. You don't always have to go to the edges. You can always do part images with your stencil. But I just wanted to show you that it does take a little bit of finesse and a little bit of patience and time just to get those through nice and smoothly and also be careful not to overwork it. Overworking it is often where you can end up with the paste underneath the stencil. So I hope this is giving you some ideas on how you can use pastes with your stencils and be able to get really good results. And I'd love to hear from you whether or not you've used pastes with your stencils or if this is new to you or if you've learned anything from this video. I would love some feedback about what you found useful. And if you've enjoyed this video, if you could like it, subscribe, and just hit that notification button so you don't miss out on any future videos. And you can always sign up for my newsletter. I have the link below. That's another way that I can stay in contact with you. I let people know about my upcoming classes. I share with them a few of some self-care ideas when it comes to art, as well as I sometimes share a few free images and other things through that newsletter. So I'd love for you to sign up for that. And if you're looking for another video about paste, click here. This is another project that I did using pastes. So I hope they have a really great week and I will see you in that next video.